that you speak to your man servant me so that I may deliver your words in thy name I pray, amen. amen the title of the message today is enmity or reconciliation an unbelievable case, a surprising case, an unexpected case an unusual case, an unimaginable case, a frustrating case a culpable and shocking case. That is the case of a young man who had lost his father's inheritance without touching any of it. Because the father was alive, I would imagine that it would appear in the headlines on social media nowadays. The majority of the most important media of the world are present for the interview. CNN, Fox, BBS News, New York Times, The Washington Post, among others. The headline would be, young man asked for inheritance in advance. And then they would have added the following. This decision shows that he is only interested in his father's assets, but he was never interested in his father. What questions would have been asked to the, to the younger son? Do you feel loved and valued by your father? I feel more loved than any other. Did you know that requesting the inheritance of your father before him dying is as, is, is as if you would kill him in life? Yes, but I don't care. Why are you leaving? Do you want to be enemies with your father? 
because I want to be independent. I don't want anyone telling me what to do. I want to live my own life. I don't care about being my father's enemy. I am tired of him. Are you aware that your father's friends and enemies will find out about this disgrace? Yes, but I don't care. Are you aware that you will cause your family a lot of pain? Yes, I know. What questions would have been asked today to the father? Are you aware that you can kick your son out of your house without giving him anything? I know, but I don't want to do that. Are you aware that when you give him the inheritance in advance, you would have to sell your land and you would lose authority, reputation and power in the community? I know in this place, land is everything. But if my son wants his inheritance, I am going to please him. It's very rare that some of the present fathers, when Jesus speaks about this story, would pick the son in the story. This was a disgrace. If the request of the son caused a general commotion in that place, the father's response touched the multitude and all who were present. present. The Greek word that is used for property is bios, which means the course of life or the means by which it's sustained. The father divided his life among them. The father's property consisted of his land. The identity was tied to the land and the social status as well. How will it go for the young man from the sad scene of a father whose heart was broken by this terrible news? We report to all of you and we promise that we will monitor this news minute by minute. Us humans who represent the younger son want the blessings of the father, but we don't want the father. We want absolute independence from, without restrictions from the father. We want the riches, the prestige, and the power of the father, but we don't want the father. We want to enjoy all the things of the world without any commitment to the father. We can't live inside a bubble. Sooner or later, that bubble will explode. In the Bible, no one distances themselves from God and remains there, achieves happiness and salvation. No one is well off as an enemy of God. No one has ever been happy far from God. There is no example in the Bible of prosperity in disobedience. Let's turn your Bibles to Luke 15, 17 to 20. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. Notice carefully the sequence in which these prior verses are. I will set out go back to my father he said i will set out that is his desire go back that is his mind say to him that is his emotions what do we need to do for reconciliation go back to the father he didn't feel worthy but he goes back he smells like a pig but he goes back he desires to eat like a pig but he goes back he acts like a pig, but he goes back. He walks like a pig, but he goes back. He still speaks like a pig, but he goes back. He sees himself as a pig, but he goes back. Others see him as a pig, but he goes back. In the depth of his heart, he feels that his father can receive him and make peace with him. How beautiful it is to think that we have a father who even though we have gone far from him, if we decide to return, he waits for us and reconciles with us. What is this young man's plan? Since he knew that he had ruined everything, he tells his father, Make me one of your hired servants. The hired servants weren't slave. They lived in the city and worked for a salary. The son wanted to pay his father what he had wasted. He wanted to initiate and win his favor from zero. Their child, teen, youth, and adult that is listening, you don't need to do anything so that the Father can receive you. 
You don't need to do anything so that the Father can love you. You only need to go to Him. You don't need anything so that the Father can receive you. You only need to go to Him. Salvation is free. You only need to go to Him. You don't need to construct a plan to save yourself. Jesus carried out the plan of salvation at the cross of Calvary. You only need to go to Him. In order to reconcile yourself with Him, you don't need to have accumulated merits. You only need to go to Him. The solution for your life is to make a decision to set out and go back to the Father. Another very significant detail in the concept of the house. The lost sheep is taken to the house. The coin is found in the house. The son returns to the house. A home is a place of relationship where you belong, where you are accepted, and where you are given the real identity of a son or daughter. All these benefits can be obtained with a close relationship with God. I could imagine the news once again in all the media. Here's a notice. The rebellious son decides to return. Will the father receive him? In the parable of the lost sheep, the pastor went out to look for the sheep. In the second parable, the woman turned the house upside down and searched for the coin. But in the third, the father waited. Why did the father wait? In the culture of that time, two-thirds of the inheritance were given to the oldest son. He had to be responsible for unity and stability of the family. The, other, the one responsible for searching for the youngest brother was the oldest brother, but he never does it. Although no one searches for you, although you feel abandoned, although someone did not fulfill their responsibility for your life, although someone caused you to leave the church, there is an older brother that searches for you and that wants to make peace with you always. Hebrews 2 verses 11. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. The grace of the Father says, I will not let you win your place in the house. I will give it to you. In a second, everything is restored back to the Son by doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. There was a ceremony called Kezaza or Embarrassment Ceremony that was practiced in the Middle East. When there was a disobedient child and he would come in the same way that the prodigal son did, he had to sit or kneel for a certain time at the entrance of the house. The son had to stay outside until this was done. The prodigal son could have thought that his father would wait for him inside the house and he had to confront the embarrassment of arriving and being mocked by others. What sense does it make that the father ran? In the Middle, in the Middle Eastern culture, the fathers don't run. That is a symbol of disgrace and emotional immaturity. But this father didn't care. He didn't care to break the normal parameters. He didn't care if the people would ridicule him. In the aspects of reconciliation, forgiveness, and salvation, God does the same. God breaks the parameters to save us. God searches for us at any moment in time. God breaks the traditions to save us. God wants to run to save you and make peace with you. Heaven is thrilled when you make peace with him. I say to you that likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Luke 15 verse 7. The father in this parable doesn't allow his son to feel embarrassed with the neighbors, friends, families, servants, present media, those who are curious in short, with everyone. He does various important things according to the Bible text. It's the son that needs to make peace. He caused the harm. He failed, but it's the father who makes the decision to initiate and re to initiate the reconciliation using all the senses. His father sees him. His father was moved by grace. The father ran. He fell on his neck. He kissed him. Bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. 
Who is the prodigal son? God is the prodigal who is searching for his children to make peace with them at any moment in time, breaking paradigms, tearing down barriers, challenging the obstacles, running back and forth, searching for his creatures to save them. Up to here, the story shouldn't be called the story of the prodigal son. Instead, it should be called the story of the loving father. We have remained perplexed and fascinated because we have never seen a father like this one. Passing from the news to where I am, I want to make a call. What things do we ask for during the 70th anniversary of the club? I want to leave with you the following story. Gina Lee tells the story of three men that were captured while trying to steal from the place of the king, palace of the king. According to the law, the three were supposed to be exiled, but they pleaded to get a month before the execution. Petition granted, said the king. You only need to ask. One of them offered a great sum of money to the king if he was forgiven, but his offer offended the king and he was condemned. The second one told the king that he had dedicated himself to family charity, but the king told him that forgiveness cannot be obtained by good deeds, and he was also condemned. When the third one's turn came, he said, Majesty, I am sorry. I ask that you forgive me. Petition granted, said the king. You only need to ask. Your Majesty, I don't want to abuse your kindness, but I would like to live in the palace. Petition granted, said the king. You only need to ask. King, I would like to ask for forgiveness for what I am about to say. Can you adopt me as your son? Petition granted, said the king. You only need to ask. The repentant thief had discovered the key that opens the chest of real treasures. You only need to ask. Here's the key for all of us. We only need to ask our Heavenly Father for forgiveness and He will forgive us. And He will give us entry into His kingdom as His legitimate children. That is what the prodigal son did and look at the good results that he received. I would like to recommend the following. Never separate yourself from the Father. Enjoy the opportunities that you have in life to befriend the Father. While there is life, you can arise and make peace with the Father. Arise this very day and go to his presence. During this, our anniversary of the Pathfinder Club around the world, which has been a blessing in preserving our children in the church and attracting others towards the kingdom, we ask that we continue to support this movement. We ask that we pray for it, for its directors, for its counselors, for its parents, for its cooks, for its drivers, for all the support staff for the churches, including its church board and pastors that are a constant help in this movement. We need prodigal fathers that welcome the children and teenagers in the Pathfinder Club. May God greatly reward them. The loving father wants to forgive you and give you entrance into his kingdom. He is preparing a place for you in heaven. Do you want to accept him as your personal savior? Raise your hand towards heaven if you want to accept this father into your life. I would like to ask you to stand. I would like to invite Sister Crossman to pray for us. Brother wait, Brother Key wait to pray for us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you once more for this another Sabbath day. Thank you for allowing the Pathfinders to lead out in today, today's Sabbath day. I pray now that as we have listened to the message of the prodigal son, I pray that you may impress on our hearts the message that you had for us. I pray for each and every pathfinder here that they may not lose their way as the prodigal son did, but they will continue in the faith 
continue in faith and continue to grow in Christ. Help those that move on, who may have lost their way for some reason or another, that they may recognize what God has already done for them and they may they come back to the fold so that everyone will be able to rejoice. And when all is said and done, I pray that each and every one of us here may be saved in your kingdom. At this time, dear Father, I would just like to remember our pastor. He is in the hospital and I pray that you may come down and touch him. He is your manservant, dear Father, and you know what situation you may be going through right now. I pray that you may dispatch your angels that excel in strength to be with him. And may you come down and touch him wherever he may be feeling. Continue to be with us as a church and may we grow from strength to strength. In your son's name I pray. Amen.